Um, my, my first comment uh, to all of you will be to uh, recognize uh, and thank uh, Mr. Noyer for being here and the Fundación del Pino uh, to have organized this, um, this speech and or this uh, dialogue. Uh, because it's a little bit unusual sometimes to, to participate in this type of debate. Uh, normally, is there no, normally is a, there is a speech uh, of someone appearing all of a sudden uh, in Spain and giving us some lessons about what we need to do, how we need to understand topics, but this is not the case. I think um, uh, Christian Noyer has been uh, very close to many developments in the European Union very close, uh, and we will discover that, that uh, in a while, of many ideas that we have shared uh, between uh, France and Spain, and has played a major role. He has been a very extremely helpful friend of Spain in many moments of our recent uh, history, and uh, so we are really very fortunate to have this dialogue with him. But my, my first question to Mr. Noyer will be, on a personal note, uh, how do you feel being in Madrid? <laughs> well, first, um, I'm, I'm really happy to be in Madrid. I, I love this city. It's one of the cities, I think, uh, very vivid, living in, uh, in, in, in Europe. Uh, and, um, and, and, and coming from Paris, when I, I mean what I, I'm saying. And I've been living in other cities for, for a few years, and it includes uh, Frankfurt. Uh, I really love being in Madrid. I'm very grateful. Uh, uh, to the foundation, you know, to have organized that and, uh, and send me the invitation. Now, my feeling is also that we are probably at a key moment uh, for Europe, for the European Union, for the area. Why? Because, uh, well, first we have to face the likely exit um, of, uh, of the United Kingdom. It's the first time that we have uh, a country leaving the EU, uh, it could have could be seen as a drawback for the European construction. Uh, but at the same moment, we have had uh, <clears throat> unexpected, at least by the international observers and markets, developments uh, in the political area. And that's, uh, that is true, especially in France, uh, because uh, we, um, uh, we have just elected in France a president who made a campaign very pro-European at a time where there was a general feeling that uh, uh, the Brexit was the start of the dismantling of the EU. We had fantastic articles. By the way, the same who wrote uh, uh, in 1998 that the, the euro will never come to light and uh, uh, that it, if, if it ever came to light, it would be a total disaster. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, pro-European, very pro-European campaign, uh, very pro-reformist campaign, at odds with all the uh, populist, so-called populist movements we've seen in, in Europe. And uh, this coming after uh, uh, what, uh, after the, the, the elections in the, in ne in the Netherlands, uh, uh, I think we, we, the ingredients are there and, and hopefully will be totally there after the, uh, the German elections uh, to kick up a new start uh, of the European Union. I think we need to do that. We need to size the moment. Uh, and so that's, that's for me uh, uh, an additional pleasure to have the opportunity to discuss that with Spanish friends. Thank you, Vicente. But uh, when we chose the title of our conference, uh, explicitly we refer <coughs> to refund, reform, or reinforce. And those terms, as you know very well, are not the same. Uh, you may be uh, very pessimistic about uh, what is happening in the European Union, so you would like to refund the whole thing, to restart again. You may be cautious about uh, what is happening, and then you will have ideas to reform some elements of the European Union. Or you may be really pushing forward, thinking that this is probably a key moment, and then you would like to reinforce. In what group mm -hmm. do you position yourself on well, those three ones? <laughs> Clearly in the, in the third group. I think we should, not, uh, we, sh we should not consider that what we have accomplished so far is not good, is negligible, did not tackle the issues. I think we, we created something which is fantastic, which is a very original construction. We started with the economy. It was the 
the concept of the fathers, but the concept of the European fathers, uh, uh, Monet and, and others, uh, was really start with the economy and then have closer links and at some point strengthen other parts of, uh, uh, of policies uh, and, uh, and uh, include uh, uh, the path towards more political union. So uh, the, the whole concept, I think, was, va was valid, but we should not stop in the middle because stopping in the middle uh, uh, leaves problems uh, open. But it has been a fantastic uh, success. I mean, we, uh, the, the, the first and foremost objective uh, uh, to, to make war impossible in Europe after what we had known before was, was completely reached. Uh, to make uh, Europe a prosperous uh, continent uh, was, I think, uh, achieved to a large extent. But then uh, we had, uh, during the last uh, decades and years, probably the sentiment, and that we must admit it was exacerbated by, uh, by the euro simply because the euro gave the comfort of uh, uh, feeling that we did not need to continue making efforts, reforming, paying attention to the evolution of cost, etc. And uh, I remember Jean-Claude Trichet used to go, when he was uh, president of the ECB, he used to go uh, at, at the invitation of finance ministers to the uh, Eurogroup uh, every month. <clears throat> and every month he was absolutely loving uh, graphs. So he was every month taking a graph and showing that uh, the evolution of unit labor cost was such that uh, we were going full speed into the war. <coughs> And no, no one was listening to him because uh, thought, well, what's the problem? Everything's well. And during 10 years, everything went well. And in the end, we know that we had a problem there. So we have to uh, pay attention to real, to real economy evolutions. Uh, we have to coordinate economic policies, and not only budget policies, not only fiscal policies, by the way. It's uh, wider than that. Uh, and, and to do that, we need to continue to build Things. But uh, also what we have achieved, and I, I'll be short there, but what we have achieved after the crisis, to my view, is astonishing. I mean, we've been able to build a sizable fund uh, in a few years. At the same time, uh, uh, we restructure the monitoring of policies, uh, fiscal and normally structural and economic policies in general. Uh, we built a banking union, even if it is not uh, totally finished. Uh, but we, we created so many things that normally take years and years in the course of three, four years. And uh, that shows that when there is the willingness to move ahead, we're able to accomplish incredible things in a short time frame. Yeah, but, but we, we built uh, a fantastic uh, project, but some key members want to leave. And uh, that's take us to the Brexit, and then how do you feed Brexit in all that? Well, <clears throat> in a way, I'm trying to uh, distance myself a little bit. I mean, there are positives and negatives. I'll start with the negatives. Uh, first time since uh, 1954 uh, uh, when we started uh, everything and we had the uh, um, uh, steel uh, uh, community um, at the time that we have a member wanting to leave or deciding to leave the union. So in a way, it's, uh, it's terrible because we should ask ourselves the question, what went wrong? Uh, and, uh, and many observers considered that it was the beginning of the dismantling of the EU. Uh, but we should try to see the positives. And to me, the positives are of two kinds. I mean, I have many good English friends, and I do regret that they leave. But this being said, uh, there were two problems with the UK. One was that uh, they had decided not to, uh, to adhere to the euro, uh, and they had a permanent exception clause. What that meant was that uh, there was structurally a difference, even in the long term, between the EU and the euro area. And many problems. Uh, that we cannot tackle, to me, are, are due to this difference between the two concepts. 
when uh, we are told uh, you cannot have a monetary policy if you don't have a fiscal policy, so you should do more with the European budget. Okay, but the European budget is the EU budget. And for those no, not members of the euro, and who will never be members of the euro, it's a problem. Now the situation is clear uh, with the UK exiting. We have the two concepts uh, in the long term should be identical because except with the exception of Denmark, but which is in fact so much linked to the monetary union uh, that there is not much difference. Uh, all countries are either members of the EMU or committed to become members of the EMU when they meet the criteria. Some of them are uh, playing around uh, to uh, uh, put that uh, uh, into the future because there are political problems at home, but in principle it's the same, uh, it should be the same uh, concept uh, at some point in the future. So that's the first issue that is solved. The second positive I see is that uh, the, the, the British never totally adhere to the, uh, to the concept of a union moving towards some form of political union, whether it will be in the long term a true federation or a confederation or a new concept, uh, even, even a bit weaker, but the idea that uh, 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 we will have more than simply uh, uh, a single market and an economic playground uh, is shared by many countries, was not shared by the, by the UK, uh, or only by a minority in the United Kingdom, even uh, in the camp of the pro-Europeans. So that will clarify and, and hopefully facilitate uh, the acceleration of the construction of the European Union. But, but uh, um, let's stay for a while in the Brexit. I, I, I imagine that um, uh, in the coming years uh, the European Union has to do two things then. One is to establish a new path uh, for the current members and at the same time negotiate something strange with one of the partners who is leaving. So that divorce should mean something in terms of policies or adequation of, the, of that member to a new reality. Uh, are there costs or, or elements there that should concern us and that even can have a very negative effect on us? Um. <coughs> Well, for me, the, the, of course, there will be complications of several kinds. First complication is that at a time where we should, uh, when, when, as I said, I think there is an opportunity uh, to accelerate, uh, to take new initiatives, uh, to make uh, strong progress. Uh, uh, I think that there is an openness uh, in several countries, it's certainly the case in, in Spain. I think it, it's going to be the case clearly in France, and I expect it is the case in, in Germany. We always have the feeling that the Germans are reluctant for some kind of progress. On the other hand, they always took the view that monetary union and sharing um, economic and, and, and finance uh, could only uh, work in the long term if there was, was more political uh, unity. So I think if we, if we take them uh, at their word and we tell them, OK, let's build new things uh, together, uh, we, we can hope to have a positive reaction. Um, so we should do that. At the same time, we will spend millions of hours of uh, politicians and uh, um, political uh, responsibles and, uh, and, and uh, civil servants and simply discussing uh, the Brexit uh, because there are so many things to, uh, to negotiate. So that's, that's a complication that, uh, for sure. Uh, th there are also other problems, and I see myself personally more problems and on more risks in the trade area than in the financial area. In the trade area, we are very integrated. Uh, we have value chains uh, which are uh, largely integrated in different domains. Uh, it's well known for aeronautics, but it's true also for uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, chemistry, electronics, uh, and in and, and some sectors of the, of the processed food industry. Uh, to take my favorite example, uh, today uh, the fishermen of Spain and the uh, Spanish and, and French fishermen have access to the British waters. They go there, they fish, they, they take fish, 
uh, and they, dis they, dis they, they go to British harbors, they disembark the fish, the fish goes to uh, 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 plants that process uh, and pack it, and, uh, and then the fish is re-exported, for instance, to Germany. So if, you, if, if tomorrow uh, the fishermen of our two countries lose access to the British waters, uh, then uh, they, they have a problem, they lose their jobs, uh, but the workers in the, in the food industry in the UK lose their jobs too, and the customers in Germany don't get the fish. So uh, we, we clearly see that we, we need to agree uh, to maintain that, at least uh, in a transition period, otherwise we, there will be disruptions. And then that is a very tiny example, but there are millions of examples like that. So we need to find a way uh, to continue that, uh, and, and it's complicated because the single market means basically single regulation and single uh, uh, judiciary system. Uh, so if, if, you, if you want to, to, to have a free trade agreement, which is something probably everybody wants, free trade agreement, to me it takes five minutes to agree on putting custom duties to zero. That's easy. You have people of goodwill, common interests, no issue. Okay. But then uh, you've done uh, uh, one, uh, one out of a million, one part out of a million of problems solved because then the real issue start. Uh, that is, uh, uh, how can you accept uh, that products come freely into your market without any control if the norms and regulations can diverge. For instance, today the pharmaceutical regulations are the same in the UK. Nobody knows what they will be in 10 years or 20 years from now, and the same for the EU. Can we, tell, can we agree in a free trade agreement that even in 20 years the pharmaceuticals can come, whatever is the regulation is the UK? No. So we need a process to follow the divergence of regulations, if that happens, and to define the, what are the products that can continue to enter freely without control. How do we ensure that uh, without controls uh, there is no uh, 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 import of products that would not be on the list of things that are admitted uh, freely? So. It's so complicated because you have to do that in all domains, all the types of, of, of products uh, that, <clears throat> well, with, with Canada, which, is, uh, which was to me a relatively easy problem, uh, it took seven years to negotiate. With Switzerland, which is totally inside the European Union and the URIA, it took 10 years uh, and 100, uh, 100 or 120 agreements uh, uh, sector by sector, so it's a huge thing. Uh, so it probably will take, even if we start with the same regulation, the prime is what happens in the future. So it probably would take, I don't know, I might be wrong, but it might take uh, five years, seven years. On top of it, we have to renegotiate with the WTO, all the WTO members. We have to renegotiate with all the countries, not only Canada and Switzerland, but Korea and a few others with which we have uh, bilateral agreements between the EU and, the, and that country. Uh, we have uh, <laughs> one, another of my favorite examples. Uh, we have an agreement with Korea. In this agreement of, with Korea, one of uh, 1,000 different uh, uh, topics is there is a quota of beef, Korean beef imported in the EU. 80% uh, of the quota goes to the UK. Now, what do we do? Uh, well, do we share that quota? Eat, eat, eat a lot of beef. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of beef, but <laughs> they eat a lot of, but I mean, if they if they say okay, we continue to take eighty percent, then we can solve the problem. If they say no, 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 uh, we want to have a separate <laughs> agreement, we shall see. So we need to renegotiate two agreements with Korea, and that cannot be done in 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 a, in a few days. So all these to show that there are huge uh, uh, problems involved. It will take time. So we need to find an interim agreement, and the interim agreement is more or less probably a, a sort of customs union that would be accepted by the WTO, uh, and probably means that the UK would continue to follow the EU rules for a number of years. 
and I'm not even uh, talking of the European Court of Justice, so uh, which is normally what what should happen with a customs union. So you see that that it's very delicate and it's of huge importance. For me, it's much simpler in the financial sector. Okay, we'll touch on that. But th that means, for, for example, that you think that um, in Spain there are a lot of sensibility uh, put on the idea of uh, us losing. Uh, British tourists or uh, our vegetables and fruits not going to the uh, UK market and things like that, you think that there will be some sort of arrangement of a long transitional period that will be found, which is going to be complicated anyway, which might uh, at least solve partially the problem and, and it will take us, I don't know where, because at the end, uh, as many generally say, Brexit is Brexit. No? Yes, I'm, 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 I have difficulties to... Uh, I think, we, we, of course, we will need um, to, uh, to find out uh, the appropriate agreements, I hope, at the level of the European Union, uh, when there are a lot of citizens of each country living in the other one. Uh, and uh, it's clear for me that... I mean, I do not see how the British tourists... Uh, because of Brexit, who stopped going to Spain or to uh, France, the Riviera, the Southwest, or Brittany, uh, because they are not going to, I mean, not all of them uh, are going to change their, their destination and go north. Uh, they like south. Um, they are not all going to go to, uh, to North Africa, especially at the moment. And uh, already some of them go... Uh, far abroad, but, but uh, I don't think they will change uh, basically their, their habits. And I, I do not see the big change that it may mean. But we have to make sure that practical problems are solved. For instance, uh, today the access to the health system in each country is easy, is automatic, uh, is well covered. So we have to make sure that, that, it, that it continues. But um, I, I, I don't consider that it's a, a huge problem, but it's, it's part of the issues to, to make sure that we can, we can handle that through. Okay. Mr. Ray, let, let's uh, switch a little bit now to France, because um, um, probably for, for most of the people that are here, uh, maybe for everyone, uh, what has happened in France is like a miracle. Uh, we, we live from Spain. F the first impression was that it was much more important what was happening in France for us than for you. That was the initial impression, is that because if something wrong happens in France, we are dead. We return to the idea of the Pyrenees, and, and uh, the alternative looked terrible. And then all of a sudden, this young politician appears, and is going to gain with a vast majority, and is going to be probably the most pro-European parliament ever in Europe. And uh, is this a miracle, or uh, are we dreaming, or...? Uh, no, 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 I don't think you are dreaming. I, well, of course, there was a success, I mean, the, the, there was a combination of the talent of the person uh, and, and of uh, the, the... But don't tell me you expect that one year ago. No, I didn't expect that one year ago, but at one year ago, I thought that the, the, the concept had the chance to run. I mean, there was another man in the, uh, who, who had more or less the same kind of ID, uh, who was Alain Juppé on the, on the right wing. And the concept was the following, that Macron uh, used uh, uh, beautifully, uh, superbly. Uh, the idea was, uh, the, we have been unable to do, uh, to make a series of strong reforms uh, in, a, in an organized way. We always did small reforms, bit by bit, and sometimes we were reversing that or going in the wrong directions. Why? Because of this, this fight between uh, the right wing and the left wing, and even the moderate on the right or on the left felt obliged to fight uh, the reforms proposed by the other side. Uh, and given the tendency in my country, I mean, to be, uh, we, we, we remain revolutionary since uh, uh, 1789, you know, so uh, sometimes we like to uh, demonstrate. And so it, it has a 
happened, uh, uh, it has, has appeared to be impossible to, uh, to make strong reforms. What the Dutch have been able to do, for instance, by agreeing on some basic things, the right, the, the different parties agreed at certain point on certain reforms that would not be disputed by, uh, by any of the parties, and then they can have differences on other things, but there is a basis of, for, for, a, for a good uh, governance of the economy. We, so are, the, we are also very bad on that. <laughs> but but uh, the idea was, let's try to have a, a sort of centrist majority with people coming from the right and from the left. No, it's exactly what, what Macron is, 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 is about to achieve. And, uh, and, and that means that he will be able to make reforms that will be supported by politicians uh, from the moderate right, politicians from the moderate right, uh, left. And, and this is probably something that will appear much more stable in the future. So I think that's the basis of, the, of, of, the, of this miracle, plus the talent of a man who who uh, was young and was able to, um, to revive some dreams, and you need dreams to be uh, enthusiastic about, uh, about votes. Uh, there was a fatigue with the old political parties and uh, um, uh, responsibles who had been there for many years. And I mean, coming with a, um, a new generation, pushing a new generation with the two sensitivities uh, to work together to achieve reforms uh, that that uh, uh, was strongly approved by the by the by the general public. But he has by the been voted majority with two elements. One is Europe. Yes. You even say Europe uh, oh, protect it's us. It's uh, fantastic. You're right. He, uh, and then reforms. Yeah, he, he, he was elected uh, being strongly pro-European and strongly pro-reforms. Pro so it's, it's, it's something that uh, yeah, we, we could hardly dream of uh, such a victory uh, with, I thought personally that we would go in that direction, uh, but, uh, but such, a, such a strong backing is, is wonderful. Fantastic. And, and um, I'm sure you have had some, uh, already some uh, insight on what could be uh, the first steps taken by the government in the coming months. W what is your perception about what would be the uh, approach? Uh, well, the, 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 the it's very early, but... but uh, no, 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 no. The concept is relatively clear and, uh, and well explained. Uh, the, the idea is during the first three months after the parliamentary elections, that will be uh, finished uh, next uh, Sunday, uh, first three months or four months, uh, we make the labor market reforms, essentially. Uh, and uh, uh, three months thereafter, that is the fall until December, uh, we, because uh, it's the time where we design uh, the, the budget policy for next year and the social security uh, uh, budget for next year, that will be the time to uh, um, change and to reform uh, as far as, as, as possible uh, the, um, the, the tax regime uh, to make it more, 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 pro, more, more business friendly. So normally in six months or so, six, seven months, the bulk of reforms will be done. Uh, and uh, since uh, it, it should end uh, just after the German elections, my view is that in next December, uh, having finished that, uh, we can now, with other countries uh, willing to push ahead, uh, propose to Germany, which will have finished its electoral cycle, uh, to move ahead and try to design new policies for Europe. So having regained the credibility that Spain regained, I, I think, uh, when it made the strong reforms of the labor market, and. Uh, and is rewarded now with uh, uh, a remarkable uh, rate of growth. And uh, we, we clearly see that the uh, uh, growth potential in Spain has been changed by the reforms already done. Probably uh, other things can be, can be uh, designed uh, also, like in all countries, and that includes Germany, by the way. Uh, but, but still, it's, um, it's, uh, we, have, we, 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 have a, we should have a chance by the end of the year uh, to kick up a new start. Which is fantastic because when we started 2017, the, 
there were gloomy days and everybody yes. was really pessimistic on that. But let, let's turn back to um, other European issues uh, and I want to touch a little bit on monetary and banking uh, uh, union th um, uh, policies and also institutions. Uh, the sentiment that uh, most of the people, maybe without knowing the, all the details, is that uh, we are far away from a European single uh, market. We are far away even from a European, really European banking union. But you were commenting at the beginning that, uh, no, that's not true. We have done a fantastic job in only a few years and the worst years of the crisis. Uh, ca can we develop a little bit the, what has been those main elements that are in place that could uh, probably help us to create that uh, complete uh, European banking union? Well, <clears throat> first, <clears throat> I think the, the, the first few years of the euro, the first 10 years of the euro were uh, extremely, um, worked extremely well. We created a unified uh, um, uh, monetary area. <clears throat> Uh, we had a unified money market, and things went extremely well. Uh, I think there were two drawbacks. First, that uh, we did not look at the, um, at the divergence of economic policies, uh, cost structures, etc. So therefore, the second episode of the crisis. But maybe more paradoxically, uh, the, uh, the combination of the single market rules and of the euro <coughs> has led uh, the banks in particular, but not only the banks, also the asset managers and the, uh, and the, and the, the, the insurance companies to a certain extent, but mostly the banks uh, or the investment banks to consider that after all, uh, having only a single, only one currency meant that you didn't need to have a trading room in Frankfurt, another one in Paris, another one in Madrid, another one in, in, in Milano, etc., etc. So why not have just one? And since you had the single market, you could have that in London. So we lost what we had 15, 20 years ago that with a hyper concentration in London, meaning that we were the only monetary area without uh, a financial place, without a clear, uh, I mean, without many of the aspects of uh, that you normally find in a, in, a, in, a, in a financial place. So we, we have been able to tackle with the primes of the crisis, but we still had that, that issue. And we saw, for instance, um, in 2011, that the decisions taken by the regulator in London or the uh, managers of the infrastructures in London were not taking into account problems of financial stability in the EU area. In short, to make a long story short, it was not their, their mandate or their preoccupation to know whether the EU area would explode uh, at the peak of the crisis. Their problem was to safeguard the safety of the city of London. We cannot live with that in the long term. And now the Brexit will, 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 will clarify that. We need to have uh, the major uh, financial uh, um, activities at least the critical mass of those financial activities under the regulation of the EU, under the supervision of the European agencies uh, and of the ECB, and, uh, uh, and, and, and be able to take into account all aspects of our financial stability uh, when there are decisions taken by, by authorities. So from that standpoint, I think the Brexit has also an advantage. It will bring back, it's not a question of only uh, uh, picking jobs uh, from London and putting them somewhere else, but it's a question really of the balance of, uh, of, of uh, responsibilities and the capacity to maintain financial stability fully, in the, especially in the EU area. So I think that's, that's, uh, that should happen. It should happen simply because it's not the Europeans that will exclude the UK from the single market. The single market is basically uh, a single regulation, a single judiciary system, uh, and uh, on top of that, the four freedoms and, uh, and uh, a good contribution to, to, common, uh, exp to, to common costs, and that is contribution to the budget. But the, the basis really 
regulation and judiciary system. When you decide to get out, you decide to get out of the single market. It's as simple as that. And therefore, and all the, the big international banks uh, and insurance companies have started to understand that, the banks are well advanced, uh, they will move what, what is necessary to serve the clients in the, in the EU, uh, and they will move uh, um, the, the, what is necessary to ensure the risk control and the compliance uh, of those systems, the trading related to uh, those activities. Uh, they will move uh, a sizable part of the management of, uh, of, um, of funds. Uh, because that's the logic of the uh, EU regulation, and they will move also uh, uh, the provision of insurance uh, um, um, to a large extent to the European Union. So we, we shall see. We will see a, 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 a sizable uh, change in the way uh, financial activities are organised, and, and I think uh, it, London will not disappear. It will remain a very important uh, financial place, a global financial place, but, um, but we will regain, uh, I think, uh, the more, more capacity to, uh, uh, to, to fund the economy, uh, to provide the appropriate services, to ensure financial stability. So I think I, I'm rather positive on, uh, on what will happen. Okay. I, I want to touch on some of the uh, critical things that have happened in in the banking system in Spain uh, in the last two weeks. But before that, um, if I understand correctly, there is an issue about uh, uh, the European monetary market, the money market uh, in Europe that has been lost in the last years and has not been recovered. And also there may be an issue about how the ECB was conceived and has been working. Are those elements that should be improved or changed or, or Yes, yes, there, there are things that, I mean, uh, when I said, for instance, uh, we've been able to build a banking uh, union very quickly, uh, that is partly true. Uh, we've built the first pillar, the supervision, it starts to work relatively well. To my personal preference, it's a bit too, too centralized, uh, and the ECB should be rather like the Fed in Washington in uh, uh, monitoring, giving instruction uh, on, to all the local supervis supervisors, uh, but whatever. Uh, uh, the first pillar is starting to work relatively well. The second pillar, the resolution, apparently uh, can work uh, when it's uh, allowed to work. Uh, and Spain gave a fantastic example, I believe. Uh, we need the third pillar, which is really in the making, but at the very early stage, with a long, long-term view, that is the deposit uh, insurance system. Uh, the, this scheme we need to develop more rapidly. So this is one of the things we should develop quickly uh, and reassure everybody that it's, it's not uh, at all the objective of transferring money from Germany to Greece. That's not the issue. But we need to have a system that really gives confidence to all depositors and, and therefore avoids uh, um, increasing tensions in periods of uh, when there is an accident or in period uh, where the country is under pressure. Uh, there are other things that we lost, as you mentioned. Uh, personally, I'm shocked that during the first 10 years, we had the totally unified money market. Then we had the crisis. And then the regulators and the deposit insurance scheme started to say, uh -huh, you cannot use the deposits made in country X uh, to transfer the liquidity in country Y, which means that the money market does not work. Uh, if you cannot, so the bank started, and, and that's, it's more than simply uh, uh, the difficulty of moving liquidity from Germany to Italy, for instance. Uh, it has proved impossible at some point to move liquidity from Belgium to France, which is I mean, quite amazing. Uh, and uh, the banks who wanted to, uh, to do that and could not had to move the assets uh, the other way, uh, which solved the problem. But still, it's, it's unbelievable that we cannot have a unified money market when we have a unified uh, mon a monetary union uh, and uh, a single monetary area. And we're supposed to have a banking union. It doesn't make sense. 
I think the ECB should do its job and ensure the reunification of the money market as soon as possible. It's really a matter of urgency, and all those sort of things have to be fixed quickly. Let, let me touch, as I was telling you, on, on one topic that has been very important in the last days, which has been the, the resolution of Banco Popular. And, uh, and uh, I want to have your views about uh, uh, what happened. But at the same time, let me throw you three comments that are very popular comments uh, and that entail some criticism. The first thing is that probably if we were not part of the European Union, uh, banking union, this would have never happened. We don't tend to kill banks that, that, that way. So we have had other problems in the past, and there's always a way to find a, uh, an excuse to leave the, the bank or protect the bank. Or, um, and that has, has, has happened because there is a European Union. That's my first comment. The second co comment is we resolve banks. Italians put public money on the banks and save the banks. That's the second tough comment. The third comment could be uh, Banco Popular has always been a fantastic bank, uh, recognized by being one of the most efficient banks in Spain. And even in the last um, uh, stress test, they proved to be with a fantastic level of solvency. So uh, the rules we have been applying do, do not work. Only f some weeks ago, it was solvent. All of a sudden, it has been resolved. Uh, this is part of popular, popular thinking and sometimes political thinking also in Spain. What are your comments? It's a difficult one. I'm sorry for that. No, no, no. It's a difficult question, but it's a very interesting question. And of course, I do not know all the details of uh, the situation of the bank, the, 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 how the operation was, uh, was exactly uh, managed, for instance, why. Is it exactly 100% of uh, the equity that was needed, and neither 99% nor 101%? I don't know. Um, equity plus the, uh, uh, the, 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 the quasi on funds. But, uh, but this being said, uh, for instance, the cocos, etc. But this being said, um, I think, yes, probably, um, there was such a habit uh, uh, to support the banks, uh, but the, 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 there was a reaction worldwide. We do not want to see uh, public money, the, the taxpayers' money involved in saving the banks anymore. So we needed to have a system. The system cannot be you let the bank, uh, bank in, in, in bankruptcy, and then the depositors lose their money, or uh, you need uh, you have only as a safety uh, net. Uh, the deposit guarantee scheme, but all the other deposits are lost. Uh, there must be a way uh, to reorganize the bank and save all deposits if possible, uh, and even the normal lending uh, uh, by simply uh, restructuring the bank, selling the bank, uh, um, maybe uh, dividing the bank. Uh, but, but it should be feasible, or in some cases it could restart if, it, if it's a limited problem. Uh, so I think it's a success of this policy. Now, why did, was it, wasn't it imposed in, in Italy? I think it should have been imposed in Italy. A problem they had was that there was mis-selling of equity as if it had been um, uh, secured bonds or deposits to uh, small depositors, small clients, and they had the fear uh, of imposing something that uh, that would not be, uh, I mean, that that would have been the uh, uh, the the, uh, the 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 knowledgeable uh, shareholders, as we can expect in a in a bank, but uh, ordinary depositors. But this being said, it should not be an excuse. First, I think those who did the mis-selling should have problems. We should not let them go, because uh, this is unacceptable in the long term. So some, some reaction should be, should be done. I don't know if, uh, uh, if this is a criminal investigation or simply a civil litigation, but, but it should be looked after. Second, I don't think that MP Montepaschi di Siena should be allowed to continue as before. 
it has to be restructured, and public money is, is step one. But there should be a step two where you uh, restructure the banks, you cut or you sell it, so you resell it to, um, to uh, an investor, to another bank, uh, or you cut it in, 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 in by half or by a third and uh, you sell it to different banks, but it should not be allowed to continue like that, otherwise it's the, the principle. And it should be an exception, that is, if, if there are other problems in Italy, I have no idea whether there will be, but, uh, but it, they, they should be treated with a normal resolution scheme, and that should be made clear absolutely clear to, uh, to the Italian authorities. Uh, now, your last yeah, was question was... The relation was between the stress test passed by Banco yeah, Popular yeah. and... Uh, the problem that uh, maybe not many people understand is that the stress tests are a way uh, to see what happens to a bank in case of a shock or a certain degradation. So. You take, if you take the situation of the bank uh, as, as it is assessed at a certain moment. But I come back on that. And then you say, okay, suppose we go into a recession. Suppose there is a change in the exchange rate of 20%. Suppose we have this or that. What happens? And uh, is the bank able to resist? Uh, if there is a recession, the amount of non-performing loans increases. Uh, is there enough buffers and capital and provisions to be able to handle that? And we see it's a test of resistance to a certain evolution. But if the situation at the beginning is not uh, what is published, what is announced, if there are more uh, problem loans that uh, that uh, that shown to, uh, to, to analysts, then uh, the stress test does not, is not uh, uh, a proof that you will never fail. Uh, it simply uh, it can only say what, what, what it can say. So was there an issue of, uh, of uh, assessment of the portfolios? Uh, or were there Mistakes, probably there were mistakes of management done, and the situation in the bank can move very quickly. Uh, we should never forget that uh, uh, the, 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 the quality of the balance sheet uh, is not, uh, uh, does not um, uh, protect fully against the bank run. If, if the confidence is lost, because of bad communication or mistakes in communications, let's say, uh, and uh, managerial mistakes, if, uh, if there start to be a, a move of depositors outside and the loss of liquidity, then it can go very quickly and uh, you, can, you can fail because you lose your liquidity and uh, you, are, you try to counter the liquidity, you start to sell assets at a price which is not the optimal price maybe, uh, and then very quickly you you down you know, in your, your the quality of your balance sheet is moving down and uh, and you can lose part or all your own funds uh, very rapidly so all this has to be taken into account and it shows by the way that uh, uh, having put also an emphasis on the uh, uh, on the liquidity rules for banks uh, Maybe not enough uh, again, but we have to, to look after that and draw lessons. Uh, but that was an important part of, uh, of, the, of the reforms of the banking uh, regulations. Do you think, and that would be my last question on this topic, uh, do you think that the, the, the perception about the, bank, the, the Spanish banking system or the Spanish banks is going to suffer internationally because of this element? Or you think, on the contrary, that this is something that could happen, and uh, it's a proof that the system has worked. Uh, I, I, I don't think so. I think it proves the system has worked. Uh, and uh, the capacity of the system, I mean, to, to, to make a resolution in, in, in a couple of days uh, and find the buyer and start again and accept the shareholders and uh, holders of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Coco Bonds, but otherwise... Uh, uh, nobody lost, whether they are depositors or bondholders, uh, 
clients in general and operations continue as before in a new framework, that, that is perceived outside as extremely positive. And I think uh, um, very rapidly that will be uh, rather an, an asset and a demonstration that the system is, is resilient, at least that's how I, 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 I feel it. Okay, I, I want to give the floor uh, to people uh, and ask you a question, but uh, let me ask you probably the, the last one, referring to the steps to be covered from now on. And I would like to have your opinion on three topics. One, uh, if it's possible and when and how uh, to create a, a unified uh, guarantee deposit scheme uh, in the European Union. Uh, second, uh, the, so many comments have been made on the capacity of the Union to have a sort of economic minister or treasury or uh, some sort of euro bonds being issue. Uh, how and when this can be tackled and, and uh, approved or launched or, or, or work out. Uh, and finally, what are the last steps for the European Union, uh, banking union that can be taken in the coming maybe one, two, three years? Um. Well, I, I think the deposit guarantee scheme is something that that has been clearly uh, uh, foreseen, designed. Simply, we uh, the, the the decision was to build it in so many years with so many precautions, uh, so many steps, because there was the fear in countries which had uh, well, let's say things clearly, uh, the countries of the north of Europe. Uh, uh, Germany, but also the Netherlands. I mean, the ne in, ne in, ne in the Netherlands, sorry, the taxpayer paid a lot to save the banks and to repair the damage done in the first, first episode of the crisis. And they were afraid to have to pay a second time uh, for the South countries. So as long as we did not, we could not prove we had fixed uh, the problems, mostly, uh, it was difficult to convince. In, in, from that standpoint, by the way, um, the, um, what, what is happening now, in particular, the story of Banco Popular shows that, I mean, really the deposit guarantee scheme is the last resort. But uh, normally, if, if the supervision is well done, if the banks have been restructured, uh, if there is enough capital everywhere, uh, the, the likelihood that you have to tap those systems is extremely small. Uh, very remote. So I hope we can accelerate that. And once again, it's one of the things I think we should uh, try to, to move ag again uh, when, when we restart discussions, uh, say December, January, uh, after the German elections. Um, on the, um, uh, well, th that's for the banking union mostly. Uh, yeah. That was your last question. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Next step oh. for the banking union. This may be the probably the. That's that's what we should do. I think yes. Okay. The yeah. other question was more in the in the economic field. Uh, yeah. Well, the idea of treasury, uh, European treasury, uh, mutualization of bonds. Uh, I think what we what we should try to find out because when we want to start a new uh, a new domain to start in a new domain there is always the fear. Uh, of certain countries that, in the end, what is asked to them is to sign checks. So we should try to avoid sign checks for the others. And uh, it's always difficult to start like that. So uh, my, my hope is that we can find ideas uh, to, uh, to foster the development of, even if it is very modest at the beginning, but uh, the organization of an institutional framework uh, with something precise to do that would be of common interest, for instance. And we had opportunities in the past to discuss that together. But if we were able to say, look, we're going to uh, decide on a number of pan-European investment projects, which are infrastructures necessary to enhance the growth potential. Uh, and then, uh, for that, we need to um, well, we, we, we need to, to 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 build up a fund or a system uh, uh, that will be able 
because it's long-term investments with a certain return, so it doesn't make sense to have only uh, current budget money, but we could borrow and reimburse. We could start to build a system, and we will borrow together. So that's the euro bonds, but with the euro bonds, we will also make new investments in Germany as much as uh, in France or in Spain. So I think the, the, the way everybody will look at that will be different, and we'll build something together uh, uh, with, with, with joint liabilities and, and with the hope of a return. It's not simply uh, uh, money for current expenditure, but it's money for the future, for investments, for our children, etc. If we are able to design something like that, then we can start to discuss about an, in, an institutional framework, uh, probably, um, Ministry of Finance. For me, one of the issues, once again, will be uh, where do we do that? Is it the EU or is it the URIA? Uh, what do we want to enhance? And if, the, if, if uh, only for the URIA members having some sort of finance minister uh, is, is acceptable, then we would need to have something on the parliamentary side. And I tend to think myself that perhaps the good concept would be a subset of the European Parliament uh, for the URIA members to be able to vote on projects. Uh, there can be other concepts, but we need also to take on board this uh, uh, democratic uh, participation in the form of probably uh, the European Parliament or a, a subset of the European Parliament. Okay, we're going to give the floor to uh, the public. Eh, una de las normas de la Fundación es eh, que eh, en este tipo de, de jornadas es dar la palabra al público, con lo cual...